ITJ once asked a problem in the mains paper. What they asked was, they asked you to produce normal propyl benzene from benzene. Right? This they asked you to produce from benzene. Now based on the, these two reactions, uh, you have to think. Normal propyl benzene from benzene. All right. Now, as you can see, the connectivity benzene is connected to the first carbon. So the charge in the form of electrophile must be on the first carbon. All right. So the chlorine or any any uh, any atom attached must be to the first carbon. Somehow the charge must be on first carbon. That will be the first thought coming to our mind based on what I have told you in uh, half an hour. So one may be tempted to give the mechanism like this. So what you will do is you will take a benzene ring. You will take no one chloropropane. If I take one chloropropane with AlCl3 what will happen is AlCl3 is not going to do nothing but snatch Cl- out of the substrate. If AlCl3 snatches Cl- out of the substrate, this electrophile will be produced. This is propyl carbocation with plus charge on first carbon. So, and I would think very delusively that this and this I is going to give me this because there's a plus charge in the first carbon this first carbon is going to attach with benzene ring forming normal propyl benzene now I would be, I would be too innocent to think of this uh, this is not what is expected out of you what is expected out of you is to utilize and retain every concept you have studied previously now previously we have studied something about shifting of plus charge or hydride ion from one carbon to another. Now shifting always and always and always and always occurs if there is a possibility of stabilizing that carbocation and there is indeed a possibility of stabilizing this carbocation here. So what will happen is this is one degree carbocation actually and un unfortunately. So this one degree carbocation will not remain as one degree carbocation. Quickly a hydride will shift from second carbon to the first carbon. Now those of who don't know what hydride shift is, I'm quickly telling you, just catch this very fast. If you remove this hydrogen from this carbon in form of H minus, then this carbon is going to be have a plus charge because of that. And this H minus, if you form that a bond between this H minus and this C plus, then this C and this H minus is going to is going to form a bond so the plus charge from this carbon is going to vanish and the plus charge on this carbon is going to be formed so what will happen is a plus charge will be created on a second carbon that will be 2 degree if you look at the number of alpha hydrogen there are 2 alpha hydrogen here if you look at number of alpha hydrogen there are 6 alpha hydrogen here so there is more extent of hyperconjugation obviously this is more stable so what will happen is what I thought of my electrophile that is not my electrophile my electrophile has been transformed into a different electrophile where the plus charge is on second carbon all right so i'm not going to get this rather i'm going to get cumene isopropyl benzene so what i thought i thought to prepare one propyl benzene a normal propyl benzene but i'll get cumene in, in fact so this is not a good method. So this is not going to fetch us marks. So what to do? What to do? What to do? What to do? How to get this? Now, uh, how to get this? Somehow, you, wh wh what we should do is, I mean, if I get something else, from benzene I get a compound A, and from compound A, if I could get this, that would be the best way out. Because by no way I can directly, by just by alkylation, I can get normal propyl benzene from benzene because by alkylation if I attempt to produce a one degree carbocation before the reaction happens this hydride shift is a very fast step 
actually there will be a hydride shift and I will no more have a plus charge on first carbon rather the plus charge will be on second carbon so the connectivity of benzene is not going to be with first carbon rather it's going to be with second carbon so I'm not going to get normal propyl benzene rather I'm going to get cumene so what to do so I'm telling you a way out now the best one among you would think a way out on himself or herself and the second best among you will retain this concept whatever I am telling you until the day of exam so even if you are best or the second best both is going to give you a good rank now listen if I carry out acylation instead of alkylation then acylation with acylation always connectivity is with the first carbon the carbon on C double bond O because at that position you have a, when you have a, a silenium ion produced a, a silenium ion will be produced like this now this there's, there's no this there's this this there'll be no hydride shift in a silenium ion because this plus charge is very stable the reason is there's a resonance with this oxygen and there's a another resonating structure that is very stable because in this resonating structure the octet of all the atom are completely filled this plus charge on this oxygen with the, but this plus charge does not signify electron deficiency this plus charge merely signifies that there's a coordinate bond formed between oxygen and carbon and in the coordinate bond both the electron has came from oxygen that's it if you look at the octet octet of all the atoms are completely fulfilled so there's a very stable resonating structure stabilizing this acylenium ion so the acylenium ion the plus charge do not shift it remains on the carbon of C double bond O the connectivity will be the carb with the carbon of C double bond O so I and if if this R if I make it ethyl C2H5 now from here to here I can go very easily you might not be the knowing the reaction because uh, actually we have to study the whole of the hydrocarbon and then study this topic but uh, never mind there is a reaction that is called wolf kishner reduction some of you must be knowing this in case you don't know do not worry yourself don't bother we will be studying those reactions once we complete this topic so wolf kishner reduction has this reagent you take hydrazine in a basic medium so when you take hydrazine in basic medium what it does is it removes off this double bond O replaces it with two hydrogen so here you can see this O has been removed off and two hydrogen has came in place so from here you can move out here very easily so to get a normal propyl benzene you must carry out acylation first and then reduce that C double bond O and get the corresponding normal chain a straight chain alkyl group alright alright we'll talk about these reactions and uh, whole of the conversion and whole of the complex conversions and reactions further once we complete all of the reactions so the third reaction in the list would be nitration look nitration simply means addition of nitro group you take a benzene you form or uh, you substitute hydrogen on benzene with a nitro group you form nitro benzene that reaction is called nitration that how if somehow we manage to get NO2 plus then this NO2 plus is going to act as an electrophile following the same mechanism as we saw in, do, in as we started this topic and this is going to substitute H plus with and uh, carry out electrophilic substitution giving us nitro benzene this will be called as nitration and now the task is to understand how we will be producing this NO2 plus now this NO2 is, NO2 plus is produced by nitrating mixture most of the time what they they write it as N dot M suppose they will give you benzene and they will write NM now you have to understand this NM is nitrating mixture and you are supposed to do nitration now the nitrating mixture is a 1 is to 1 ratio mixture of sulfuric acid H2SO4 and nitric acid HNO3 alright now 
the structure of sulfuric acid is like this and the structure of nitric acid is like this there's a coordinate bond one of one of bond is coordinate bond between nitrogen and oxygen now both are acid suppose what i do is i take a beaker i put uh, 10 ml of sulfuric acid and put a 10 ml of nitric acid and i do i take nothing else acid loses a, a proton acid loses h plus acid gives out h plus acid, acid furnishes h plus in the medium we all know from time immemorial whenever we are given HCl we ionize this as H plus and Cl minus now this H plus is electron deficient it can never ever remain as H plus what happens is by default there's an understanding there's water in the system and there's a reaction with water and forms hydronium ion H3O plus okay so this H plus has actually formed a coordinate bond with the oxygen of water so this anything cannot remain electron deficient for more than a nanosecond or a picosecond so there is a coordinate bond formed between this between water molecules which is a solvent we, which we don't show in the reaction and this H plus so what happens is with now acid loses H plus somebody has to accept that H plus and accommodate that H plus in some kind of bond so that that H plus will be stabilized alright so whenever you have a acid you always have a base without base you cannot have a acid now here I didn't take anything else all I take took is H2SO4 and nitric acid <coughs> now sulfuric acid being a strong acid will lose as H plus it will give away H plus now here there's no water to form hydronium ion now if any one do not accept H plus of sulfuric acid then sulfuric acid will not be able to lose H plus same goes with nitric acid now nitric acid also being a strong acid will try to lose H plus and someone then have to accept H plus now the only way out is this loses H plus this accepts H plus or this loses H plus and this accepts H plus because there is no uh, there is no not a third party present in the system that could accept H plus of both these acids now th although both are strong acid but still when there are only two acids one of them will be operating as an acid the other one have to act as a base although being a strong acid in presence of H2SO4 either nitric acid will act as a base or in presence of nitric acid sulfuric acid will act as a base now depending upon the acidic strength if sulfuric acid has high acidic strength sulfuric acid will lose H plus and nitric acid have to gain that H plus or depending upon the strength if nitric acid is a strong acid the nitric acid will lose H plus and sulfuric acid have to gain that H plus now if you don't know that I'm telling you and you know by now until your deathbed sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than nitric acid so in presence of sulfuric acid nitric acid will have to act as a base so this sulfuric acid what will happen is the sulfuric acid will lose one proton so suppose it loses this proton S plus will go off O minus will be created this S plus has to be gained by s this nitric acid now this nitric acid has three oxygen all those three oxygen has lone pair those lone pair can be utilized to form a coordinate bond with this hydrogen to accommodate this hydrogen in any kind of bond because this S plus cannot remain naked of electrons it has to be accommodated in some kind of bond right so what happens is this oxygen come to the rescue of this hydrogen and this oxygen offers its electron to the hydrogen released by sulfuric acid to form a coordinate bond you should wonder you should wonder why this oxygen why not other oxygen you should wonder and I'll tell you the reason why this oxygen why not other oxygen now this sulfuric acid will be forming a hydrogen sulfate ion and here we have H plus accepted by nitric acid the reason why this oxygen will accept and not the other two is inside this sphere the circle the answer is inside the circle if you look inside the circle you have a very good leaving group H2O if this leaving group leaves then the reaction will proceed ahead had oxygen came to this hi had hydrogen came to this oxygen or this oxygen then H2O would have not been formed and the reaction would have been stagnant there 
and there would be no way to neutralize to make chargeless or to neutralize this as this substrate and the reaction would be stuck and it will be a rea reversible stuff will occur and the S-plus will go back to sulfuric ion or sulfurate ion so what happens is uh, here when S-plus comes to this oxygen there's a chance of a reaction to proceed ahead <coughs> and reaction proceeds ahead and more of the S-plus is removed from sulfuric acid and comes to nitric acid so uh, some step has to go ahead in a reaction then only reaction can evolve if something becomes stagnant then reversible path starts to operate and again you get back the reactant you started with <coughs> so what will happen this S2O will be removed from this substrate when S2O remove, is removed it will be removed as neutral water it is already having a plus charge so it need to have a negative charge so the electron from this bond will be going to the orbital of oxygen to neutralize that oxygen it will be removed off as S2O since the electron of this bond has been moved to the orbital of this oxygen this nitrogen will be devoid of its electron so there will be a plus charge on nitrogen and these two oxygen are there so NO2 plus this is how <coughs> nitronium ion is generated